Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how indexes actually look when you uh, implement them on tables and the main reason I'm doing this is because uh, even though there are a lot of information out there regarding how indexes actually look and uh, how they behave the diagrams often don't really convey the whole picture so rather than resort to diagrams in this case I thought I would actually show you using uh, the C uh, T SQL DMVs and uh, DVCC utilities exactly uh, how indexes actually work inside of SQL Server. Uh, for this purpose what I've done is uh, if I open up Management Studio you'll see that I've created a table inside of uh, my database called MadWorks inside uh, which there's a database table called uh, Index Internals now this table as you can see here has a primary key which is an identity column uh, not an identity column it's just an integer column and then I've got uh, char 992 which is basically just to fill out the data and uh, then we've got date of birth which is uh, again uh, just there for uh, making sure that the row rounds off to 1000 bytes per row uh, for the first step what I'm going to do is I'm going to truncate the table called index internals which essentially wipes out any information regarding pages that are allocated to this particular table so how do we know that? Uh, the way do we do that is by basically looking at this uh, DMV here called uh, SysDMDB database page allocations. Uh, what this guy does is uh, if you tell him the, uh, the database as well as the table name, he will in turn go ahead, look up the information and uh, get back to you in terms of uh, which pages are allocated to that particular table. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this and uh, pretty much as expected right now there are no pages allocated to the table and uh, that's why we see uh, the um, zero pages allocated there. So next what we're going to do is I'm going to insert about f uh, let's say nine rows into this table so you'll see I'm basically just taking an identity uh, integer value and in inserting some data into this table called index internals. As soon as I do that you can see that I've inserted nine rows here and now when I query this uh, DMV you'll see that what I've got here is I've got one index allocation map which is this one here so this is my index allocation map and then I've got uh, three pages here now as far as these three pages goes uh, we need to kind of figure out exactly what's inside of these three pages because uh, as you can see my one row rounds off to about eight bytes I'm sorry about a thousand bytes and I've inserted nine rows so essentially I should only have two pages whereas as you can see here I've got three pages so how do we figure out what's going on there uh, the step for that would be to run this command called dbccind database name followed by table name so when I execute this you'll see that I've actually got index level which is page 0 which is the leaf level of the page of, of the index and then I've got one level which is index level 1 which is the uh, intermediate page or in this case the root so you can identify intermediate pages by using the uh, the page type over here as 2 or even looking at the level here 10 is obviously the index allocation map so in this case uh, if you look over here you'll see that I've got page number uh, 10645 and 10648 which are my data pages and then I've got page number 10647 which is the intermediate leaf level of the page so in order to look at this data what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at the uh, leaf level node first I'm sorry we'll look at the intermediate node first so I'll say uh, 10647 over here and uh, I'll execute this and when I do that you'll see that this particular leaf uh, intermediate node references two child pages which are basically 106 Four five and one zero six four eight, uh, which are the uh, the pages that we were looking at previously, which are the uh, the leaf level pages. You'll also see that basically this guy says that the lowest value uh, page number one zero six four five contains is null, and the lowest value that page number one zero six four seven contains is nine which is why that ID over there uh, is included. You might sometimes see a unique fire column as well here if the clustered index key column that you're using is not unique. Uh, in this case, uh, the basically this basically tells us that uh, if you come to page number 10647, you can either go up the node uh, for any value ranging from null to 8 and down the node if you're looking for any value 9 and above and to sh prove this what we'll do is we'll just take this value here which is 10645 
and when we execute it you'll see that the slot count for this particular page is 8 which is basically the number of rows inside this page and uh, by slot count 8 if you scroll down what you'll see is as you scroll right down to the very bottom of the page ID number 8 name is the one of the columns there new rows and then we've got a date of birth so this page contains 8 rows and then that obviously means the ninth row that we inserted here because of this 9 over here has gone into the next page uh, so let's just look at the next page here which happens to be uh, 10648 so let me go ahead and just put that in here 648 I'm going to execute that you'll see that here we've got a slot count of 1 because we've just gone ahead and inserted uh, number 9 over here in this case what I'll do is uh, if I continue to run this to say about uh, 10,000 we will see a new page getting added which is basically the node uh, the intermediate pages keep adding more leaf le uh, intermediate levels uh, to accommodate uh, the fact that the intermediate pages also get full and there's a capacity in terms of how much data that they themselves can hold so if I go ahead and run this now we c you can see that we've inserted quite a bit of data but for the most part if you look at it we've got index level 0 which is the leaf level and then 1 which is the intermediate and so far it looks like we've not inserted enough rows inside this table to justify another level uh, oh okay looks like we have so you can see uh, we've got one more guy here which is uh, uh, index level 2 so let me go ahead and just show you this I'm going to take this data put it in an Excel sheet and we're going to focus on just the intermediate nodes for now so I'll open up Excel and uh, let me just copy this over here and if I look at the leaf level over here if I will just look at page numbers you'll see that we've got these are the uh, index pages basically so uh, if you look here we've got index level 2 and then we've got index level 1 so if I look at index level 2 which is essentially the new root of this uh, B tree uh, what we'll see is I'll just take this page ID from here 8585791 just a second and uh, I'll just have a look at what's inside that page so when I execute this you'll see that the new root page basically points to the uh, the other intermediate pages here so you'll see here that this root level page now says that I in turn point to the child pages uh, 10647 over here as well as uh, 85792 86062 and 86063 and 10647 which is this page basically internally then references all the child pages that uh, it references so essentially what you're really looking at when you look at a B tree uh, in the example that we are doing here is something like this you might initially start off with maybe one page and then you might have many pages as a result of uh, adding more data into it so I'll just go ahead and do it like this and right and as you go ahead and insert more pages your clustered index basically what it's doing is it's just referencing those uh, pages inside the intermediate node so it'll it'll be something like this just a second let me just quickly draw this out it'll be something like this Oops. now as the B tree intermediate node which in this case is uh, the level one so let me just go ahead and put this as uh, intermediate L1 and these will be my leaf nodes uh, as you can see when this guy gets full at some point uh, the intermediate level 1 becomes full and as a result you need to accommodate or you need to allocate more pages so in this case what will happen is that we'll just take this guy and we'll copy it and then we'll create more pages but as soon as we do this we need a way to allocate or we need a way to link up all these pages and that is where the second level comes into picture which is uh, this guy here so I'll just call this guy the new root and I'll call this guy the root level Oops. L2 and he in turn has pointers to uh, these guys 
So the reason I'm showing this is because uh, there is uh, confusion because most uh, people who look at indexes for the first time hear the term B tree, which is basically balanced tree. And this is not exactly true in the case of clustered and non-clustered indexes inside of SQL Server because uh, they're not always balanced and there there is no really one direct way to access a data page. There is, uh, uh, in terms of uh, a B tree, the balanced tree, any data that you're looking at will always take the same number of steps, but that's not always the case in a B plus tree, as you can see here. So sometimes the um, the left hand side might have more pages or less, uh, fewer pages or records inside of them, and as a result, the distribution is not always 50/50 uh, or equal, as you can see uh, in this particular example. So the more data that you insert, uh, you'll see that the more pages get allocated and as a result the width of the B tree increases. Now the reason why this is important for us would be because if you look at a traditional uh, example here in this case what I've done is that I've simulated a row that's 1000 bytes and as a result I can only fit 8 bytes or 8 rows into a page. Now this is commonly encountered in data warehousing scenarios because what you'll see is in a data warehouse you have very wide columns and if you have wide number of columns or wide columns then you can fit only fewer pages into that or uh, fewer rows into that page and as a result what happens is that you end up generating many many more leaf level nodes compared to maybe an old TP system and this has a negative impact in terms of uh, search behavior for data warehouses when compared to um, uh, when when compared to the traditional old TP systems because you don't really efficiently use the entire B tree in, 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 the, in, the, in the end what happens is that you have many more intermediate nodes just because you have many more leaf level nodes and the reason you have leaf level nodes in such large quantities is because you just can't stuff enough data into a single page so with this I hope that uh, probably the index structure is a bit more clearer in terms of how it actually looks and uh, the traditional diagrams that you see only represent usually maybe two nodes or two levels and usually the levels would look something similar to this for example if I just uh, google uh, B tree over here let me just go ahead and do that real quick uh, B tree index uh, or I'll just say B tree index uh, clustered. The diagrams that you'll typically see will uh, look something like this and this doesn't always convey the exact picture. It ca sometimes tends to misrepresent exactly what's happening. So in this video I hope uh, the actual layout of the data is a bit more clearer and uh, hopefully uh, that'll help clear some doubts in terms of how indexes behave and uh, why page splits and other things like that happen. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video.